Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. This morning. Honorable, I want us to start with the happenings uh, in Parliament because yesterday uh, nine members of the PF uh, yesterday lost their seats following the Concord ruling delivered on the 27th of June 2024 um, and we heard in Parliament where uh, the Deputy Speaker uh, declared their seats vacant what does this mean for the country's democracy? First of all it is a very sad day for Zambia it is a very sad day for our democracy as a country uh, remember that uh, we've come a long way in building, you know, this democracy. Uh, and over the years, you know, we as a Zambian people have agreed to be ruled by, you know, the laws that we have agreed. Because we must start by stating that there's no uh, community, you know, let alone there's no house that can, because that was a clear disregard of the constitution. And remember, our laws are derived from many, you know, uh, um, uh, areas. Um, the number one, and which is the supreme, you know, source, is the constitution. Uh, number two is we derive our laws from, you know, the judgments that are made in court, the judgment laws, and of course, you know, statutes as well as the laws that we, you know, promulgate in parliament. And so, all these put together is what governs us. We're defined by those laws. So, any disregard of those laws, remember. My primary role as a member, as an elected official, that is why when we go into parliament, the first thing we do before we transact any business when we are elected is to go and lift up the Bible and swear that you shall defend and protect the Constitution. So all elected officials, starting from the president going down, will have to make that declaration that they will protect and defend the Constitution. What we are seeing and what we saw, you know, Honorable Speaker Moyo do yesterday uh, is something I never thought anybody in their normal state would do. So let's, let's go to the facts. Mm -hmm. So this is an issue regarding what, is, what has been happening in the patriotic front for some time now. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's been argument uh, suggesting that these happenings in the PF have been orchestrated by those in power. They have argued that they have no hand, but of course the happenings have suggested otherwise, that there's a strong hand of those in power, you know, over the happenings of the PF. For instance, the genesis of all this, you know, is a convention that was held on the 24th of October. Conveniently, on a day where, when we were hosting a, a foreign digni you know, head of state, the police were on hand to protect, you know, the people that had convened illegally you know, uh, uh, to hold a convention that was not, you know, called on by constitutionally elected people to call for a convention. Now, that as a first instance will tell you that there was a hand of the state because how do you then, you know, uh, give police officers, so many of them, for an, a bogus convention that happened? Now, those who were clapping for Miles and Tim, uh, 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 today, I'm sure they must be extremely disappointed because, unfortunately, things have turned a little bit different for Miles and the team. Well, one would argue on that and say, <laughs> listen, uh, anyone can apply and tell the police we need protection and the police will pro provide pro protection. Well, this is the that, same police and, that... And that we shouldn't assume that it's the ruling party. This is the same police that have refused to go and, you know, police, uh, you know... Um, rallies that have been called by different political you know uh, mm. players so it's convenient to go and police you know convention of, of which they gave reason to as to why they didn't police those rallies and if if they gave reasons to police um you know that gathering that happened on the 24th don't you think they have a reason to do it so unfortunately 
these nine members of parliament, of course, rushed to you know the constitutional court for determination. Mm. Of course, they challenged. They wanted the constitutional court to, you know, um, uh, more or less set aside the the pronounced expulsion from the party. And we had the the ruling of the court. In essence, the court had ruled to suggest that they do, did not have the jurisdiction to hear the matter mm -hmm. because there were no. Uh, it, it did, the, the matter did not border on uh, uh, infringement on the rights of you know the petitioners. Mm -hmm. The suggestions of the suggestion of the, the constitutional court was such that these are matters, and in fact, in the ruling, the, the, the constitutional court had intimated to the parties that going forward, go and sit down and iron out these issues of your party, which you know, uh, gave way to Mao Sampa sitting down the affected people, and we saw a letter being written to the speaker uh, by Mao Sampa suggesting that he had provided amnesty for those affected. In fact, he had provided amnesty for seven out, seven of, of, them, yeah. out of those nine. Yeah. So in essence, for us as members of the public, we thought that that was now, a, you know, a gone-by mm. issue. And, and because of practice and because of you know, the, the, the experiences we've been through, when a party writes to, you know, the speaker, she has no way out other than to oblige mm -hmm. because she only, you know, parliament does not have a business interpreting the law. Mm -hmm. I think that you've made Madam Speaker, you know, Nelly Muti make that pronouncement quite often. Just last week, I raised an issue on the, deputy, the, the second deputy speaker challenging what I thought is, you know, his stay in office illegally. And the ruling of the speaker was that she has no business in making interpretation of the law. So parliament has got no business in interpreting the law. What parliament does is only to fall back on what has been pronounced by the courts. So for as long as a particular matter is very active in the courts of law, parliament has no business in pronouncing itself. And I think that is very clear in the case of Kambwidi. You know, Honorable Kamwidi, mm. where you know the court made it very clear, directing Judge Matebini then that you have no business in making interpretation. Your role is only to do that which is pronounced by the courts. And by the way, it's only the constitutional court that I want the right person to address Parliament or tell Parliament regarding what's going on in the, in the Patriotic Front, which was supposed to be Secretary General. I. Does that stand, or is that Parliament's business interpreting on who communicates to Parliament regarding, you know, political parties? It's a circus. It's a circus, you know, which is why, and I want to be on firm ground to make this statement, that Parliament, you know, has no business in making interpretations because we read the committee mm -hmm. is actually, you know, removed the Secretary General of the PF. He has actually removed... You know, including the leader of opposition and appointed other office bearers. This is the president who are actually now is doubling president as well as secretary general. Mm -hmm. So it is only him, I think, today that can make a communication. And in this case, he has communicated to parliament. Okay, it is on record before the announcement yesterday that Mao Sampa had communicated to parliament the status quo number one to re -app or to appoint a different person to now act as leader of opposition, which is why yesterday we raised a num on a number of points of orders to challenge the speaker why she had decided to ignore the instruction of the PF to appoint Honorable Mlenga Kampamba to, Kampamba to sit as leader of opposition, when before they were very quick to act on such instructions. Mm. So you can see that our friends are really acting very funny today they will act on a letter coming from Mao Sampa tomorrow they will say no we can only act on a letter coming from Ngona. Ngona. No, Ngona as the status quo stands today cannot act because other process today that which is to challenge the speaker's decision it is multiplicity of these actions in the court I think that if we're a functional society or country today the action they took on the 27 was enough for them to continue staying in those offices because the matter has not yet been de de, you know decided you know by the courts so honorable moyo misdirected himself and i think that today let me make this statement today it may look fancy 
for people that are holding on to positions to act in the way they please. Mm. These things, these crimes they are committing, because you see, the breach of the Constitution is a grave matter. It may be okay today that you enjoy power, you can make a pronouncement as you please. These are things that are going to haunt certain individuals today. But what saddens me is that slowly we are seeing a very clear pattern of our friends deliberately disregarding the Constitution. You remember the case of Honorable Bowman, Lusambo, and Malange. The Constitutional Court was just from delivering a ruling that these individuals were eligible to contest the elections in those respective constituencies. What did the Electoral Commission of Zambia choose to do? They decided to ignore the ruling of the Constitutional Court. Today, we are thrown into another mess. First of all, it started with you know, the, the removal and replacement of the leader of opposition. Again, we challenge these things. And for me in particular, I've been very vocal over these things. Yes, the happenings in PF do not affect me because I'm, in, I'm an independent. Yeah. But my primary role as an elected official, like I did intimate in my preamble, is to defend and protect the Constitution. Because what tyranny does, or what dictatorships or dictators do, is that they will start slowly. Okay? In Bemba, we say, bale, bale, tonya pa, no, no, pa, no, no. They will do, they will make this, they will make this decision. They see it's quiet. That is a fear thing where they fear Tomorrow, they will make another decision. Again, they say, ah, tapare fredge tefi. Tomorrow, we are going to find ourselves in a position where we'll be asking ourselves, but why didn't we act when we saw those signs? Immediately, we saw the signs by the Speaker of the National Assembly, Nelly Muti, going to great length to interpret the law against what the Constitution says. We should have raised red flags. And those red flags should not have been raised by only me or the people affected. It should have been a chorus sung by every reasonable thinking Zambians that you are dwelling into matters that you are not permitted to dwell into. And so we've seen slowly uh, this pattern building up. And I can conclude from where I sit that our friends are drifting into a tyranny. And very soon, we'll be asking ourselves, why did you do this? And which is why I want to again echo these sentiments. When we see injustices being committed against one person, it calls for worry. Because even if you are not the one who is affected by those injustices, tomorrow it will move to you. You remember the case of Judge Muma. Judge Muma is abducted today. They write a suicide note and throw him in Zambezi River. We thank God that his life was saved. The pattern of things building up, the clear and blunt and disregard of the law, building up, you know, cases building up. Here we are, we are watching. But I can guarantee you very soon we'll find ourselves in a position and we'll be asking ourselves, but why didn't we act when we saw these things building up? More news to come, my lovely viewers. Make sure you subscribe to this channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below. And also turn on the bell icon to join the notification squad. For now, I'm out. Alright, that's all for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.